last time on Sail and Kitty Wake, we recovered our saloon cushions, repainted the cabin, and showed you our DIY fuel polishing rig. In this episode, we inspect our rigging and Samsung posts and find and fix two big problems with the boat. One of the things that the surveyor picked up when we had Skua surveyed was that we need to inspect inside the stay lock rigging terminals. Um, these are just at the bottom of every rigging wire and there's 13 rigging wires on this boat um, and what can happen is that the water and the salt runs down and corrodes around here and inside the fitting. So because this rigging is a little bit old I'm going to take them all apart, inspect them for corrosion, make sure there's no pitting um, and no damage and then um, at the moment they're unfilled so I'm going to fill them to stop the water getting in there, which can cause problems, especially if it's um, in a cold place, the water can go in and then it freezes and then can crack the fitting. So we're gonna inspect them all really carefully, clean them all up and then fill them with butyl tape. Um, sorry, not butyl tape, butyl um, mastic. So it squeezes out the top and then that should keep all the water out. So as I'm taking these apart, I'm just checking and noting down how many turns past hand tight they are. So I know my hand tightness goes up to about there, and then it was four more revolutions to where it was set at. So after I'm done, I'll just set it back to that setting. So I'm just gonna give this a quick clean up to get all the gunk off um, so that I can have a really good look at it. Um, and any bits which are sort of tarnished, like where the surface has gone a bit orange, I'll just um, polish them up so that I can get a really good look at the metal underneath. So this one looks okay from the outside, so I'm just going to go ahead and open it up. Um, there's a tiny bit of orange tarnishing, but there's no sort of cracks in the wires, there's no sort of signs of any pitting or corrosion or any cracking on the um, fitting itself. So we'll open it up and see what it's like inside. Yeah. So you can see there's a fair amount of accumulated gunk in there, which is why I'd always fill these rather than just leave them for the water and everything to run down. But I'll try and clean this off and then we'll check the condition of the rigging wire itself. And you can see there that it's got a big crack down it. Now these are replaceable bits um, so it's not a huge problem. The actual fitting itself looks okay. So I think what's happened with this rigging wire is that the um, strands have been left too long and then when it's been tightened up as it's tightened, it's cracked the um, former. Now, I don't think it's really structural, which um, the actual former itself, and it has obviously formed the end of the wires around it, but then they're kind of protruding a bit longer. You're supposed to leave it sort of two mil sticking through, and I think this is probably more like four mil, which is why it's um, not really formed up quite right. <clears throat> so I think with this one, um, we'll have to remake the fitting um, to make that the right length and while we're doing that I might just go ahead and shorten the rigging wire so that we're removing this bit of um, worn rigging wire and then we'll put a toggle at the bottom. So the thing to note is that this was done by a professional rigger and um, while obviously the mast has stayed up and this hasn't failed or anything it's not really a very well assembled fitting the fittings that I put on Kitty Wake were all assembled better than this so it goes to show that even if you pay someone to do it you shouldn't always necessarily trust it um, implicitly and um, still research it yourself to make sure that what, done, what is done is done correctly especially with things like rigging which um, obviously if it goes wrong it can be pretty catastrophic. Once we have time we'll order all the bits that we need because I need to check all of the different bits of rigging. Um, and then we'll do a big order and then it should all be alright. So that's the first bit of rigging that I've looked at. I'm now going to go and look at all of the other bits of rigging. So having checked all of the rigging, 
we decided that we're going to shorten all of the rigging wires um, and to do that we've got these toggles so the idea is you place that at the bottom and then you can shorten the wire by that much plus um, obviously if you need to adjust the amount that's threaded in the turnbuckle then you can take that off as well so I aim to have all the turnbuckles threaded about a third so you can see on the one that I'm about to do that it's almost completely threaded um, so I'll also chop off a bit more so that it will then be the right length for adjusting the rigging as well. Now the most difficult bit is um, actually once you've got the fitting open is getting the wedge former and the um, wire that surrounds it out of the socket part of the fitting. So I've spent quite a lot of time trying to figure out how to do that either by heating it up a bit or by using penetrating fluid but I think the only way that's really worked is to um, chop it off the wire and then drill through to release some of the pressure and then you can bash the wire and the former through from the top. So now I've cut that end of the cone off, what I need to do is bash it through from this side but because um, when it was tightened up there's so much pressure in there that won't be possible as it is at the moment. I've tried it quite a few times on others and it doesn't work so what I need to do is drill a couple of holes and that just releases a bit of the tension so that the inside bit can compress a bit and then you can bash it out from the top. So now that the um, wire is out from inside the socket bit, we're going to clean it up um, using a bit of water and some WD-40 and some oil and stuff to get it nice and clean so the threads run nice and smooth. And then um, we're going to reinstall it on the wire a bit higher up. The new backstay had a swage die at the top of the fitting with the wire left extra long so that we could cut it to size and fit the stay lock at the bottom fitting. So after attaching it at the top, we trim the wire, slid on the socket part of the fitting, open the outer strands of the wire and slid on the former. This was then formed by inserting the threaded socket into the fitting and tightening the two together, shaping the outer wires. The two parts are then unscrewed from each other and sealant is put into the fitting before reassembling. At this point, sealant should ooze out of the top showing that the sealant runs all the way through, stopping water getting into the fitting. The fitting is then screwed into the turnbuckle and tightened to the required tension. What's your after right? So, um, I'm replacing our backstay chain plate. This is the one that was on the boat. Yeah, it's not very beefy. And the previous owner left us this one, which is about double the thickness and in much better condition. So I'm going to swap them over. But this is the hole where it comes up through the deck, so I'm just enlarging that at the moment. I've been using the saw on the multi-tool just to like cut downwards. And now I'm just trying to get into all the corners with this bit of sandpaper. Um, and then underneath I'm going to have to chop off the old bo bolts and then put some new bolts, which I think I'm going to through bolt all the way through the transom, well, kind of the transom. The current backstay on the boat has these insulators which are to do with the SSB radio so that the um, sort of in-between part acts as an aerial. Now because we're getting rid of the SSB radio I'd rather not have all these um, connections in the backstay because then um, it's just more things which can go wrong with it. So we've ordered a replacement backstay and today I'm going to swap them over and then fit it. So 
So I've just put the main halyard back to the chain plate that the back stay was attached to just to support the mast while I go up it. forecast is for really high winds um, it's been up to gusting up to 83 in the forecast previously now it seems like it's gonna be gusting up to 60 but as we've seen uh, from experience the forecast is always quite conservative here so we are going to take the uh, sails down um, at least the Genoa and then we'll see if there's any space for the stay sail down below uh, it's not ideal because we've got all of our tools and bits and bobs uh, for our boat projects in the quarter berth and that's the only storage we've got left so let's see how it goes. safe inside we just have it on the city because uh, our tools and things are just taking up most of the boat and the uh, forecast is still for a windstorm yeah we just wait now and get used to living on the lean uh, but this morning we're gonna get off the boat and uh, go work in the library and um, that's the place where I spend most of my time so I'll show you it okay so we are going Getting off the boat, uh, so I'll show you my morning commute. I've got my mug, coffee in it, and yeah, we're going to the library to work. Whee. So I'm doing paid work, uh, mainly copywriting at the moment, which I really love. So yeah, I'm just trying to find ways to fund our boat projects and our 
cruising kitty uh, so our cruising season this year of course I'll still have to keep working whilst we set off but hopefully a little bit less so we can enjoy uh, the summer but who knows so I've just popped back to the boat to um, get a snack and see what the wind's doing um, it's not too bad here, it's gusting, at the masthead it's gusting into the 50s and low 60s. But since we took the Genoa down, she's healing over a lot less in the berth, which is really nice. Um, hopefully we'll be able to sleep alright tonight, because the wind's supposed to go on for a full sort of 24, 30 hours, which could get a bit tiresome, but I think with earplugs in it'll be alright like this. One of the problems our surveyor hadn't picked up is that the Samson posts on our new boat were almost completely rotten. Removing the old Samson posts was a bit of an ordeal as they were buried deep into the very thick fiberglass bays of the anchor locker. We found a local carpenter with a huge piece of Iroko from which we had him cut two three inch by three inch five feet long new posts at a total cost of 40 euros. We left him a tip. The posts were coated with epoxy where they sat in the bottom of the locker and where they passed through the deck. Basically, anywhere water could sit next to them. So it's taken a fair bit of um, bashing and um, wedging them in, but they're now sort of in place. This one's taken the main weight of the bowsprit, so this one's a bit loose, but. Um, what we'll do is we'll put the metal pin back in which goes across here between the two to like hold them that way and hold the bowsprit down and then right at the bottom I'll put a bolt through each of the Samson posts um, where it goes through a really thick fiberglass bulkhead and then they should be really well held in place and then we're going to seal all around them to stop them rotting as well. watching. If you enjoy our episodes, you can support our video production through Patreon, starting from $1 per month. Join us next time for more boat work aboard Sailing Vessel Skua. <laughs>